All right, well, hello. Uh, we are going to start Chapter 8, which involves rotational motion. So last chapter, Chapter 7, we talked about uh, motion due to gravity and planets orbiting each other, and now we're just going to talk about not necessarily planets rotating, but other things that move in rotational motion. And so what we're going to do first today is just talk about some of the vocab terms associated with rotational motion and make a link between what we've talked about with linear motion as far as velocity, displacement, acceleration, and then relate that to circular or rotational motion. So lots of new kind of vocab words. Well, when we're talking about rotational motion, we're going in a circle. And so a lot of things are measured in circular through radians. And so we need to talk about what radians are. And so we measure fractions of revolution in terms of radians, but there's also a lot of other terms that we can use for this fraction. So a grad is one four hundredth of a revolution. We know a degree is one three sixtieth of a revolution. And then we have a radian, abbreviated with RAD, which is one half pi of a revolution. And so if one radian is one half pi, then a full or complete revolution is two pi radians. Hey, uh, when we talked about linear motion, we talked about displacement, velocity, and acceleration. And so we're going to talk about each of those three things in terms of circular as well. So the first one is angular displacement. And so this is represented using theta. And this represents the angle of revolution. So how far, you know, from your, oh, I need a pen. If this is your circle, okay, and you're starting here and you've moved here, then this will give you your displacement. Counterclockwise rotation is considered positive, and that does seem a little, like, not quite correct. Uh, and so then the clockwise direction we would consider to be negative. So angular displacement is the change in the angle as an object rotates. So like we talked about, if we start here first and we're rotating in the negative direction, Okay, if we stopped here, then this would be our angular displacement, or theta. Since Earth does one rotation in 24 hours, remember we said one rotation was 2 pi radians. And so in 12 hours, the rotation has gone through pi radians, which would just be right half of a full rotation. And in 6 hours, it rotates through an angle of pi over 2 radians. And so we could relate that to theta. So if you want to find the distance that an object has traveled through this angle, it's equal to r times theta, where r is your radius and then theta is your angle. And so this unit would also be reported in meters. And the next component that we talked about was linear velocity. And so now we're going to talk about how that relates to angular velocity. Well, angular velocity is with this Greek symbol. It's kind of a fancy w. And it's the angular displacement divided by time. And so it's very similar to the equation for linear velocity, which is just distance over time. And that gives you the displacement. So radians per second would be the units for angular velocity. So uh, to put this in terms of theta, our angular velocity is equal to the change in theta divided by the change in time, which would give us the average angular velocity. So very similar to what we do for linear velocity. To get instantaneous angular velocity, you take the slope of a graph of angular position over time. And so very similar to what we did with linear velocity, where instead of um, angular position, it was just the displacement over time. And then you would get the slope, and that would be the velocity. Same thing here. So for Earth, the angular velocity of Earth is 2 pi radians over 24 hours because it's 2 pi to do a full revolution, and it does that in 24 hours. And then this is just converting our hours to seconds. And so that comes out to 7.27 times 10 to the negative fifth radians per second that it covers. If we wanted to relate this to linear velocity, um, the V would represent our linear velocity. And this would equal r times our angular velocity. And so if we do that for Earth, we know that the radius of Earth is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters times our angular velocity that we just figured out, and that comes out to 464 meters per second. Okay, so we also have angular acceleration, and this is with just um, the Greek symbol A, alpha, versus just a regular like English-looking A. And this is the change in angular velocity over the time. So again, it's a very similar equation to what we would use for linear acceleration. 
we're going to take the change in the angular velocity over the change in time. And because velocity was radians per second, then angular acceleration is radians per second squared. We can relate this to linear acceleration. So A here represents our linear acceleration, and this is equal to R times our angular acceleration, where R is the distance from the axis, so very similar to the radius. The last part, and we don't really have one of these for linear, uh, or that we've talked about very much, but is angular frequency. So angular frequency is the number of complete revolutions made by an object in one second. Um, maybe the closest we've talked about linearly is when we talk about waves as far as frequency. And so angular frequency is equal to the angular velocity divided by 2 pi. And so what we're going to talk about in the next section is what factors can cause the angular frequency to change. How can we change the number of revolutions that an object does in a certain amount of time? So to kind of summarize, because we've talked about a lot of new vocab words, um, here are each of the three main quantities that we talked about. Um, frequency isn't part of this. So we have displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Here are the linear variables and units for each of those. Here are the angular variables and units, and then the equation that relates the linear version to the angular version. So um, probably maybe this last part may be good to put on your note card, or maybe even labeling some of those variables because they are a little bit different than what we've done before. These are the practice problems that we're going to go over in class, but of course you're more than welcome to look at them ahead of time if you'd like. And then here is the homework along with the answers, and this will also be on your outline. Have a good day.